Okay, what I have here is an Xbox 360 that was given to me uh, by a friend of mine who used to repair Xbox 360s in high school for people who have, have had them fail, and there were a lot of people. Uh, he ended up accumulating six or seven Xboxes that he couldn't fix, and his, his method of fixing was wrapping the Xbox in a towel and just letting the fan and the heat eat the, the solder underneath the, the GPU and letting the GPU uh, re-contact the pads on the board. So uh, basically um, what I ended up doing was using the Yahoo A58D heat gun and uh, um, you know I heated up the case and it did, did pretty fancy but I, it ended up working for me so I just felt like it would be something uh, worth documenting so I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys through it and I hope you enjoy. Okay so I am going to check the temperature of my oven before I heat up the case which I will set the Xbox 360 motherboard on. Um, I am not putting the motherboard in here but it's it good information to notice anyway so got it right now 83.1 degrees that's about what my house is maybe a little cooler turn it on bake or we'll put it out warm warm technically on the dial is 100 degrees go ahead and wait and see what this says once it goes up That should end up leveling out and dropping back down and we should see the uh, the oven come back on. See I don't want to see anywhere near like 220 because so I'm not trying to melt any solder. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to make the case of the Xbox 360, the metal case, hot so that I can set the board on it and have it preheat the board while I'm putting heat to the top of it to uh, reflow the GPU. So yeah, I'm getting pretty high now. I'd have to I'd have to be careful handling it for sure at 200 degrees. Yeah, I've been making noises like it's starting to cool down now. There we go. Okay, so we can safely say that the case will be about 195 degrees when I pull it out of here. And that's good to know because that's that I would assume 100 degrees lower than our lowest setting. I mean, 200 degrees is on the dial, and we're getting 200 degrees at 100 degrees lower now from the settings. So, good to know. Um, we'll go ahead and use that to heat up the case and let the case preheat our Xbox 360 motherboard. We're going to set the case in there upside down. Now I want to iterate, there's no plastic on here, there's no PCB on here, there's no oil, nothing. It's clean as best I could with hot soapy water. There's nothing here that's going to off gas and destroy food or my body later. Uh, so it's safe to do this in my home oven. This isn't a motherboard with flux. This is just the, the metal shell of the Xbox 360. That's what I'm going to set the preheated board onto while I reflow this thing. So go ahead and leave that. And on top of that, I saw a couple different ways people were reflowing other projects. They were taking uh, Coke cans. I took a Rockstar can here. And they were making uh, basically shields to deflect as much as the heat of the heat as they could away from the motherboard and toward the the chip that they were trying to reflow so my original idea was something something kind of like that and uh, i was going to set that up off a couple washers two or three washers and uh, put uh, some bolts through it and tighten it down onto the washers that way it wasn't putting any pressure against anything on the board and I could just sit here and reflow that one chip. And I think because I'm re I'm preheating the whole thing and preheating the case that it's gonna sit on, I think the best way to do it is to just get everything nice and hot, set this on the, on the case and just reflow that one chip. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this together and uh, we'll see you then. I'm going to sit here and do this and I'm going to flip it over every once in a while and I might go to high after a few minutes. And all the while we're just waiting for uh, the case inside to get hot. So once I feel like the case inside is nice and warm, I'll go ahead and take the motherboard out from underneath the blower 
and then we'll take it inside, set it all up, and start reworking the GPU. I think the motherboard's nice and warm. We're gonna go ahead and go in here, grab our chassis. Ooh, she's hot. Okay. Use a towel. Go in here, grab our chassis. Take that to our room. Straight on the case, as good as you can get it. Okay, we got it on the case. Got our heat gun set to 300 degrees, max airflow. Everything nice and preheated. We're just gonna keep licking this GPU right in this shield. The longer the better, I guess, from here on out. And our motherboard off to the side. We're gonna to wanna to flip our case over. We're gonna want our wanna drop in our GPU and CPU mounting bolts. These are M5 by 12 millimeter, which I felt was about perfect. There's a guide online that says 10 millimeter. That's wrong, at least if you have this unit. Now we got our uh, eight mounting bolts in there for the main chips. We're gonna go ahead and <clears throat> a couple of pieces of tape just to keep them in there for a short time. Okay, <clears throat> now that we got those kept in there, we're gonna flip that back around. Okay, from the original uh, X clamp hardware, you're gonna wanna take one of your old standoffs and your favorite pair of garbage calipers. Zero them as best you can. From the threads, the top part of your flange, the bottom part of your threads, you're gonna wanna take that out about halfway down your taper. So you're looking right there about seven millimeters, okay? So that means we want about seven millimeters worth of washer. Okay, looks like we got our uh, washer assemblies up. We're just gonna go ahead and check that with our calipers one more time and see what the heck we got. Okay, I got about, let's see, if I take it from here, 3.8, 3.9, and I know if I take it from here, I usually get about one, so 4.9, and then I take it off of my washers straight to underneath my X clamps, not the extrusions, just the base under my X clamps. I get about 4.26. I will call that good. So uh, motherboard flex will take up for the rest. That is a asinine, asinine statement. Um, it just sounds ridiculous. Ridiculous coming out of my mouth, but that's that's how this stuff goes. That's uh, that's how people were doing it when their Xboxes were failing a week after Christmas. <laughs> so we'll be okay. Go ahead and use the Phillips head here to work the screws through if I can without breaking anything. Aha, got one. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Now that we've done that, 
we can uh, go ahead and worry about getting our uh, heat sinks assembled and on the machine. They are going to be getting some thermal paste put underneath them today. I'm going to leave what's on there because what's on there is basically brand new. So we're going to put... Uh, down here. Uh, bigger dot there. Uh, bigger dot there. Okay. Dunzo. Now, what we want to do is we want to get these heat sinks as flush against the dies as we can with their thermal paste and then try and get all the screws behind them hand tight and we're going to do this one at a time so we'll go ahead and practice with the uh cpu heat sink here we got our big extrusion heat pipe obviously that's going to go through the uh the couple capacitors here what a chancy chancy ass way to do that anyway i gotta take these x clamp mounts off it's all right here. Okay. I'm going to turn it on its side very carefully. Peel some tape away. Get those started. I'm just going to try and push it directly in the center against the die as best as I can. I've gotten two corners started. Let's go ahead and get the third and fourth corners started, pulling off our tape. And started and started. Okay. Leave our GPU ones on there with the tape for now. Go ahead and just kind of not even snug, just barely tight, keeping the cooler as straight on the die as you possibly can. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. With that, we're going to do the same thing, but we want to look. We've got a fan shroud here to worry about, so with that in place, we're going to understand how our heat sink goes. I've got my four screws in with some tape. We're going to tip this back up. Hold the GPU down. The GPU heat sink down as best as we can. Sure, why not? Hold it as best as you can. Try to get something started here before you start. Okay, you got one started. You're going to want to pull your tape off, but you're going to want to get your stuff started too, so. Okay. They're all started, so now that we got that done, we're going to want to make sure we put as much pressure as direct center on the die as we can. And just try and get those flush. Okay, so it's been quite some time later. I was trying to use two lower wattage power supplies in parallel. They were, they were Xbox power supplies, but uh, they were not the 203 watt. This, is re this requires a 203 watt uh, power supply. So I tried to put them in parallel and I, got, I would get it to boot and as soon as the logo would start to, start to come on, the power supply would have a fit. One of them would have a fit and kick off. So I need to start learning about power supply construction because I've had multiple issues with those power supplies before but I've went ahead and got a 203 watt power supply because I do eventually want this thing to be clean and J tagged and everything so here I threw the, the power button on and I threw the screw 
and the power button in the front, these two screws right here. So with that, I'm gonna be able to take the fan. I'll get the fan in here. Plug it in. And the fan shroud. Now I can go ahead and get the disk drive in. Power. Set that in there. All right, now I'm gonna hook this up and see if it works. Okay, I've got the TV on. I'll go ahead and put in HDMI. And I happen to have a controller here. I'll go ahead and plug that in one of the front ports. Okay, let's power this thing on and see what happens. And it looks like it's working. Yep. So we have a fixed red ring of death. Okay, this one seems to be turning on. There we go. Kind of open tray. Wow, the tray opens on this thing. That is a rare sight for one that's sat for a long time. Great. Well, what I did work. I have a fixed Red Ring of Death Xbox 360. I'll run this for a while and I'll update the video on the comments section if I have any issues, but for now, I'm satisfied. Thanks for watching.